Hi everyone, uh, Warwick here from Network Platforms. Um, we're proud to have the webinar today with Beckwind, um, launch of the new Beckwind features in South Africa. And um, on the on the panel, we've got um, in Inigo from Beckwind. He's the VP for Business Development. Myself, I'm the CTO. We've also got um, Byron from Interworks. Um, he's a, a client that is using Beckwind and he will give us some feedback on his experience. Um, from from uh, my side, um, uh, Network Platforms um, is, is 20 years old this year. Uh, we started in 2003. Um, a lot of you know Bradley Love, he's the, the CEO of, of Network Platforms, I'm the CTO. Um, we are a specialized back-end system provider. We tailored solutions for MSPs, ISPs and wireless internet service providers. We, we offer a whole uh, suite of products tailored in that um, solutions, um, including obviously connectivity, IP transit, DIA, uh, for the dedicated internet requirements. Um, we've also got a virtualized data center offering, which is almost white labeled for the clients to use. Um, we even allow your, you to bring your own bandwidth into that virtualized environment and have VLANs to any other service in the data centers. Um, you definitely can chat to us offline over with regards to all those other services. Um, and um and and speak to our salespeople about our promotions that we are having please um i'm going to move on to inigo from from beckwind who's going to give us a, a product presentation uh with regards to the new features and the beckwind offering inigo over to you yes thank you warwick and welcome everyone to this presentation uh i'm inigo serrano um dp4 for business development at Beckwind. Uh, we've been on the market for about now, or I would say eight years, uh, selling to ISPs uh, our product. Uh, initially, we started doing a lot of research and R&D for our solutions, and we uh, had our, own, our first commercial solution in, in 2017, uh, you know, uh, trying to sell to large ISPs, then we realized that our product is certainly more adapted to small, medium uh, service providers. So um, I'm going to talk about, about the product. I would also say that this is being recorded so everyone can have this, uh, this webinar then, they can watch it and they can review it. And also we have a, a chat box bot on, the, on this application. So you want to leave some questions, please use the chat that is in, in Go to webinar. So, uh, talk about what we do. We are uh, with solution uh, that is helping optimizing networks. And what what does it mean optimizing networks? First, uh, just want to say that we are a software software that uh, it's installed in off the shelf uh, servers or in virtual uh, machines, mainly in KVM or VMware, and we sit in the middle and sitting on your network. So. Uh, all the traffic uh, that needs, that wants to be optimized is going to be passing through us. We're going to do, we're going to analyze, we're going to optimize it. So it's sitting there on your core network, uh, some place between the, the internet gateway and the access uh, gateway. We usually uh, recommend to set up a bypass link. So if everything happens to the server, traffic can be diverted to the bypass. So you will not lose uh, service. Uh, when you're running our, our solution. So uh, so what we do is we try to solve problems, you know, which are the typical uh, problems or challenges that uh, many of the ISPs like yourself are, are ex experienced every day. So kind of the typical, the low or sp speed test, people are complaining, they don't get in their uh, plan that they are paying for, so and they call you, that's generating uh, issues on your network. So also, you know, kind of the, the problems with uh, visualization of video. Nowadays, Netflix, YouTube, uh, HBO, Star, they are very important applications and people, they, they really want to see 
uh, at a good quality. Uh, other issues that you might have, you might have users that are abusing the service, you want to identify them, maybe you have some resellers that are uh, in, in your network that you don't know, you want to identify that, we can help you there. We can help you, very important, mitigating congestion and, and reducing bandwidth. In some, in some situations, you might have uh, you know, this congestion, you, you don't know what's happening, or you want to uh, reduce, you want to save bandwidth, certainly we can help you there. Uh, very important latency nowadays people they want to have the lowest latency they're using uh, a lot of uh, online gaming they're using a lot uh, uh, zoom uh, VoIP so their latency is, is extremely important so and we can we can certainly help you there and the last but not least is that you need metrics you need to have visibility what's happening on your network uh, what's happening with different applications what uh, quality is experiencing your subscribers. And this is what we're going to talk about. Uh, on the first part, uh, we, we, we are running uh, what is called TCP optimization, and this is helping, it's going to help increasing the, the speed experienced by your subscribers. That they, sometimes is different than what they are, what they, the plan they have. So they, and what we do, we're not going, we don't want to get very much into technical details. We prefer to just move into the, the benefits. So, uh, what people, when they're doing downloads, when they, when they are, you know, uh, using maybe Netflix, uh, they they may they might have a plan. Imagine they have like a 50 meg plan, but then then when you do testing, you see what applications, what speed Netflix is using. That you realize that maybe they're just using half of the available one bandwidth. Uh, so and that's typically uh, the the cost typically will be in most cases. Uh, the, would be the transport protocols, TCP, UDP. They need to decide what is the, the actual, the best speed, the optimal speed that this uh, the data needs to be transported. And they they are conservative. They they make mistakes, and sometimes they they are they don't they don't provide the, the, all the capacity they can. So what we do when we are deployed in the network is that we are going to go at maximum speed most of the time. Too. So we're going to uh, uh, benefit of get all the, 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 the available capacity in the network. Uh, and we do and the, we do it and the results are very clear. We, we can provide you metrics of what are the benefits, what are the speed that, that has been increased in the network. For instance, this is a, a customer that is running our, our solution. On, on average, we are helping them to, uh, to improve about 44% the network speed. But if you go to the details to so different applications, we, we're helping a lot on Netflix. We're helping a lot on Disney, on TikTok. So this is the kind of things that we can do. We can help increasing the speed of applications, and it's going to help, of course, uh, improving the quality of experience of your network, and you'll have happier customers. So uh, this is the first part. You know, try to improve and help speeding up networks. The second part that I want to talk about is bandwidth management. So we want to we want to limit bandwidth, but at the same time not hurt latency and pro, um, compromising quality because that's what's happening. When you're limiting, you are the network is going to generate probably retransmissions that's going to generate more latency, and we try to avoid that. And just getting a little bit technical in this case, uh, this is very unique as we do. We we limit we we enforce uh, you know limitation what is called a multi queue technology. On top, this is the typical implementation as, as Microtik, for instance, would do. We have a simple queue and all the packets will, will come in and go out to the customers. Uh, and on the same queue, we'll have packets from, you know, heavy packets from video streaming, these kind of applications. And then maybe there is a green packet that is online gaming, that, but it's going to get there and it's going to have to wait on the line until it's, it goes to the customer. So in our approach, we have a multi-queue. So it means that each flow has its own queue. It's like each service, it's Netflix is going to have, Netflix flows will have its own queue. YouTube flows will have its own queue. So when there is a, a VoIP packet or online gaming interactive packet, it will have its own queue and it, it will be automatically prioritized. So they don't have to wait. So that means that when we are enforcing limitation, we're going to make sure that latency does not apply for, especially for interactive packets. 
And so this is the technology, very simple, but very clear. We use multi uh, in, in to enforce limitation. And what, that's, what is the main use of this uh, bandwidth management technology with the multi -queue? We provide mainly three uh, elements. One is called automatic congestion management, uh, that I will show you how it works. Second part is the QoS, which is subscriber rate enforcement, but using this technology. And then per application limitation. So this is kind of the DPA, DPI based shaping. So um, ACM, automatic congestion management, we try to detect congestion. Congestion means what, you know, some, we try to raise the speed on, on, on a flow and we see that, that, that there is a limitation on the speed. Uh, when this limitation occurs, latency and retransmissions start to grow up, they start to, to, to build up. That means there is a congestion. So we try to apply a slower limit to this, to this customer to make sure that they exit this congestion situation. So, and we do it automatically. So you don't have to worry about uh, how, you know, set up anything. All the, the flows are going to be uh, taken care of by this congestion, automatic congestion uh, uh, technology. And what is the impact? The impact is that when we are uh, limiting, what we're doing is we're using ACM, automatically the retransmissions of uh, our network go down. This is an example of one of our customers that the retransmissions uh, we had this with the ACM off, where the ACM, ACM start to, to work, we saw about 40% retransmissions uh, going down. So that's really going to help uh, the quality of the, your service that, that you're offering to your subscribers. Uh, also, when we provide uh, metrics about congestion, we can measure what was the congestion level of our network. And we saw that when the ACM was on and this customer, they were about 40% of the traffic was under congestion. And when the, uh, the, the, we, re, we disconnected the ACM, that went up to about 20%. So we are helping this network to re reduce congestion by about 20% just doing this ACM automatically. So very, very unique and very, very important technology we, we can provide. Rate limitation, that's the second part we can do. We can enforce rate plans, uh, we can do it. And uh, we are integrated with most of the, you know, of the billing uh, platforms that are in the market. And um, many of them, of course, you're using that, Spling, Sonar, PowerCode, Azotel. Uh, so, you know, kind of, uh, you know, the solutions we work with. And the results in this case is that we also delivering, when we are doing the rate enforcement, we, we are delivering a better quality uh, when limiting, which is very important because that's when really problems start to, people are using their plan at the maximum level, you know, and then they try to do things, they try to do online gaming and they start suffering. So in this case, this is an example, one of our customers that how, when we were not doing the rate limitation, the latency was about between four or five milliseconds, the, the access latency, we started doing the, the rate plans and that went down to about 20%. So kind of the, what we should expect when you're, we're deployed in, in different networks. So that's one part. Other thing that's very interesting is that we can do limitation per application. And that means that we can limit, for instance, video streaming, we can limit peer-to-peer, -peer, we can limit uh, so software updates. And this is an, this is an example of uh, how we can use our technology. Uh, this is a, a customer that we're maxing out the, the network at 1.8. You can see this is a flat, flat limit there of on the on the bandwidth. So we started to apply a small limit on on uh, video streaming just to avoid reaching this congestion. And it was something like limiting video streaming per flow at five meg uh, per per flow uh, per customer. So that created a small reduction on bandwidth that allowed this ISP to exit this uh, ongoing uh, uh, congestion at, at maxing out at, uh, at 1.8. So another application, another use of our uh, bandwidth management technology, something very, very important. Uh, a third part of things that we are doing now, in this new functionalities that we can provide to, to our, our customers is visibility, is providing you metrics about your network, 
providing you metrics about uh, applications and very important also metrics about the quality of experience of your customers. Uh, talking about this, the first part would be what can we provide in terms of QOA metrics? Uh, and this is this is very unique. We can provide you many things. We can provide you retransmission level. We can provide you flows, uh, latency, congestion level, maximum speed. All that is going to be there uh, for you to take advantage, to analyze, and to take decisions. Sometimes people call you, do you know what's going on? Uh, and then you send the technician to, to the customer, uh, losing time, losing money. And maybe there's something that you could just look into before uh, with our tool. And you can also order, you can order, for instance, you can order the, the top customers with congestion. And you will see, we can set up also thresholds to get uh, alarms, kind of uh, visual alarms. You know, these guys are in red because they have a high congestion. What's going on? And maybe then you can dive in, you can click in one of these subscribers and go down and see the specific. Uh, metrics of this user. You can see then dive in and see what is the average speed, what is the maximum speed, uh, what that's, what is the latency of this subscriber, how that latency is comparing with the network, how that packet retransmission they have is comparing with the average of the network, how much traffic is under congestion. All that it's certainly going to help you uh, get into the details of what's going on. Uh, and we provide this metrics for three months. So you have a history of three months of these users. Um, also very interesting is that we can classify traffic with DPI. We can provide you information about what are the main applications that people are using, at what time, you know, and give you, uh, you know, very interesting uh, metrics of the usage of your network. We can provide you latency per application. Do you, do you want to know you know, you don't know what, how, how net, how far is Netflix? Maybe your 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 internet provider is having an issue, the transit provider, uh, and you can see here what what is the latency of all the applications. So that's kind of very also very unique for you to know. Uh, okay, uh, don't want to go uh, more, much more into detail. Just to tell you, you know, the main uh, functionalities, the things that we have just launched. Uh, you know, all the visibility part, all the, the ACM, which is a very unique and new functionality for, for the South African market. Just to say that we have right now 450 ISPs working with the product. We are dedicated 99% to ISPs. So we are doing this for you. We know the problems that you have and we try to solve them. Uh, just a very, very also important thing about how we work with uh, new customers, we provide a free trial. So we definitely want you to test. We, we don't want you to buy without testing. We definitely want you to be and see what we are doing so that you're going to, you know, see the, the results and decide upon, you know, what, what's the benefits we're providing. So we will, we provide you a free demo for, uh, for five, 15 days. Uh, if you want to move forward, you can buy a license into uh, with two with a subscription model a monthly subscription or a perpetual license and which is also very important is you pay per per megabits per second per gigabit so you pay as you you grow you don't have to pay 10 gigs if you on, only have one gig so if you pay one gig then you pay two gigs you're building up uh, you, you we, we're growing with you so that's the kind of the, the business model that we have with you with, uh, and you know, very very interesting for you uh, is that our partner network platforms is offering a discount uh, on our perpetual licenses uh, for the people that are attending and that have registered to the webinar. So you know, benefit if you want, uh, of course, of this promotion. And our sales representative Samuel Martinez uh, is is the, the the person that will you know will be contacting you. Uh, to see if you're interested uh, to move forward with the with the demo, um, just just a very quick summary of course of what we can do for you, as we can help you delivering a faster internet service. Very important, uh, in especially you know not only on fiber but also on radio networks that you want to you know benefit for this. We can manage your congestion situations automatically, so you don't have to worry about you know when you get congestion. 
we're going to help you reducing latency and retransmissions as we have seen on, on the examples. We also can help you getting full visibility at network, at application, and a user level. And last, very important, is that we can provide you a free demo for you to test, and we have affordable pricing. So all those 450 ISPs, their ISPs with 500 megs, with one gig, with five gig, 10 gig. Of course, we got people with 100 gigs, but you know we have a pricing that is adapted to to that to the WISP and to the small medium ISP. Uh, worldwide so uh, just encourage you to 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 of course to, to test and but you know maybe uh, it's good for me to say the good things but you know, it's good also to hear what some of our customers in this case byron uh, from interworks can tell us about his experience with with the product so interworks started out as a wireless ISP focused on mainly business customers. And um, at that time, speeds were fairly low, uh, five meg, 10 meg around there. And um, over time we grew with uh, with the wireless things. Capacity increased, 20 meg, 50, 100, 200. We added some license band, microwave links, some FTTB, some IPT services. And eventually we had some support issues where People were complaining about international performance. They only get five megs from London, so those type of things on a 50 meg link. And um, obviously, we started digging, trying to figure out where this problem might might, might come from. Um, found a few dodgy DIY solutions, I think, which is obviously not the right way to go um, for a production environment. And eventually, we stumbled upon um, this platform. Um, we reached out to them and Inigo sorted out uh, sorted us out fairly quickly with with a demo unit and and a license and it made a significant difference in in the network from customer experience our own experience it you know it, it, it was really significant so much so that we we put the device in bypass mode just to see what the effect would be and our support and queries definitely spiked um, significantly so yeah, I think um, I think all the links that you that you use in in your network, wireless, microwave, fiber, they all have a sense of congestion somewhere. Um, the stats really show that. It was interesting to see which networks have have the most congestion. You know, if if you know, in the in the South African region, Bumatel, Frogfoot, all those people, you can actually see that on the stats um, and compare that to your own, let's say, wireless or microwave network. Um, something else that's that also stands out is the bandwidth management. Um, taking that load off off your micro microtech devices, if that is what you use to to do your queuing, um, that load is pretty much moved over to the BQN, um, freeing up freeing up those resources uh, dramatically. Um, yeah, that's that was my experience. Overall, fantastic. The support is brilliant. Um, it makes a massive difference to the quality of your network and your customer experience. Thank you very much, Byron. Uh, very happy to hear that. <laughs> uh, just, just for, uh, can you tell us how long have you been uh, uh, working with with us? Just to add yeah, so we've been we've been using it for yeah four years, three years, four years, four years. At, at the moment. Right. Yeah, yeah, and it's been a fantastic three four years, definitely. So that that's the kind of uh, things we want to hear. People that have been using uh, for a long time means that definitely we're delivering value to our customers and and you know that we are trying to develop new features new things uh, that are really uh, helping uh, them to to improve and and if we don't deliver that value then of course people will not stay with us so um thank you again uh, Byron, for your for your testimony for being with us for so many years um i'm i think uh we are just on uh, Going to the, the interesting also part. Uh, I don't know if uh, if uh, Warwick, we have some questions on mm. on the panel. On well, well I, I I want to kick off some questions if I can. Um, sure. Things that commonly get asked. Um, so so from the um, product, maybe Byron, if you could just assist and just give us a brief 
technical overview of the hardware you implemented, just so, because that's a common question prospective clients always ask, what do we need to put in place? Um, maybe if you can just uh, elaborate on what your hardware solution, maybe where you positioned the, the, the server. All right, so so we made use of a Dell 1U server. Uh, I'll have to quickly look up exactly which model we used. Um, it was R440. Mm -hmm. One new server with a, a specific 10 gig uh, NIC in there. It, it had to support a specific uh, service um, on the NIC as well. I believe that's part of like the, the hardware layer to, to hand over um, the IP traffic. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what we used. Um, Inigo, the, the specific... You. Sorry. Um, that's fine. Uh, Inigo, the, the specific NIC, um, if I remember correctly, that is network cards that support the DPDK hardware Correct. offloading. Yes, uh, they need to be Intel. That's, uh, I think this is also someone is asking, uh, Henrik, uh, about the, what is the need, uh, uh, I mean, that to be installed in that where it's needed. Basically, we need a server uh, with, you know, with uh, the, the right CPU. We can we can tell you, we can help during the onboarding part on the demo on what exactly what CPUs you will need. But we don't require very, very powerful CPUs. With, with an i3, i5, i7, we can do up to two or three gigs of traffic. Uh, so uh, we also, you know, uh, that's the, but in terms of the NICs, we are very specific, right? We need to have Intel-based NICs because they support this DPDK. So it, for, for more than one, two gigs, one, one gig that are using fiber, then the X520 uh, Intel car or the X710, the other ones. But we also support 25 gig uh, interfaces, 40, and now 100 gig. So, but also they all need to be uh, Intel. Thank you for that. Um, on the on the networking side, um, Inigo, can you just elaborate? Um, you know, a lot of the WISP environments, they don't have their, IP, their own IP address space at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, can, 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 can they pass and can the system optimize for, for netting traffic? Yes, we do uh, optimize. Uh, even if there's, there's a NAT, we, we, all, we are just going to see one IP address, but we're seeing the flows there and we're going to optimize those flows independently that, that they just have one uh, one IP for the whole traffic. It's true that the visibility we will only be able to see that IP address, uh, but in terms of acceleration, in terms of also on bandwidth management uh, per flow we can do, the ACM would also uh, help on that. So of course, we the, the, they will not get 100% of the full benefits uh, they're using NAT, but they will get many of them. The most important one is acceleration, uh, ACN, uh, and application bandwidth management. Lovely, thank you. Um, another question for you is um, clients, some of the clients um, have been demoing or have in place already um, a product called Prezim. Mm -hmm. um, why why is, is Beckwent superior? Um, in your own words. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Prism is, is, uh, is a, very, a very good product. They, they have been in the market for many years and, and they, they, you know, especially with WISP, they are very, very common. And I, we have seen that many of them in many customers in South Africa that are using it. Uh, they are, they can provide visibility, uh, especially on the AP, on the radio side, they can help you on that. They can enforce uh, rate plans. I think that's the two main features. Uh, the difference with us is that we uh, we can be active. We, we if the you know most of the time uh, uh, that the customer is not reaching the limit. So in that those cases, presum they I, I might believe they don't do much. We can accelerate in those situations. We can manage the congestion. Uh, we also can help you uh, setting up rules to. To limit bandwidth per application, they don't have that DPI. Uh, I think that they're the, 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 the main difference, and I think there's also in terms of cost, they are the cost of Prism is much higher than than that one. Okay. And then, um, I mean, what, what we encourage to, is that to to test uh, both, so they can compare. 
brilliant. Um, if, if a client's already got a Prezim server in place, can they use that same hardware? Yes, yes, typically they have, they have yep, the same, so they, more or less the same requirements, the same uh, next that we, that we use. Brilliant. Um, what happens if a client buys, uh, and you mentioned it in your presentation, if they've got a 500 meg, megabits per second license, but they're pushing suddenly 700 or a gigabit across the service, what actually happens with regards um, to the licensing? The, well, we would just optimize up to the license, and if they pass in more traffic, that we will not block it. We will just pass transparently. We will not do anything, but of course we will not uh, stop that traffic. Brilliant. Um, and some of the ISPs are hosting um, CDNs like uh, a Cloudflare cache or a Netflix um, OCA. Mm -hmm. What happens with regards to that sort of traffic that's that's coming out of their network? Well, that traffic is is true that it's going to be, you know, uh, served closer. So it's probably going to have a better speed. Uh, we we also can speed up that traffic despite that it's, it's in the network. It's CDN, but bear in mind that we we do other things, not only speed up, but we also limit. We also give visibility. We also enforce uh, rate plans. Uh, so uh, we even if they have caches in the networks, we're going to help with these other uh, functionalities that I mentioned. So that's certainly we encourage that all the traffic goes through the through our, through our appliance. Brilliant. Um, if if a client starts initially with a subscription plan, can they um, convert to a perpetual license later on? Yes. Yes. I mean, we they start with that. No problem. Uh, that's in fact that's something that people do. They start with the subscription. They see, uh, despite they have done the demo, they keep it for some months, and then they, they realize this is going to stay in the network for for good. And maybe financially is is better to buy uh, uh, the perpetual license. Okay. Um, and with with regards to the product positioning, um, we we mentioned in the same breath ISPs and WISPs. Is is it is the Bitcoin product more suited for wireless ISPs versus fiber ISPs, or or can it um, handle both network types equally? Um, uh, we manage both equally. In fact, we most of our customers they 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 have some part of radio but they they're hybrid they start with radio now they have fiber i think that's also some trends in, in south africa people moving to fiber uh, so but in fiber keep in mind that there's always a, a wireless leg at the end there's a wi-fi there so uh, we, we help uh, most when there are the, the issues in the network so the more perfect the network is less probably we're going to be helping in the ten, in the let's say in the, on the acceleration part, on the other part of the visibility, on the ACM, on the net, on the bandwidth management, that is independently of whether there's a fiber or a wireless. But we we work with all kind of networks, and, and they will satisfy needs for 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 all of them. Lovely. Um, I just wanted to update um, also with regards to um, the network platforms offering. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the guys do want to test, um, and the POC is available for, for a two-week, 15-day period. Um, we also have some POC hardware. We have um, a unit in Johannesburg and a unit in Cape Town, um, sufficient for up to 10 gigs throughput. If anybody does want to test, you by all means welcome to chat to our sales team as well and book it out. It is quite a popular item, so we might not get an immediate booking, but we can assist and, and get you a booking as soon as possible. Um, the units are in the Terraco environment, so it's very easy to move it into your own cabinet if you are there um, and you want to test. Um, is there any other questions that I we can think, yeah, address? I think this we have uh, additional question. Uh, some, somebody's asking about the pricing when there are some some four or more uh, throttling points. 
uh, we say that we treat that of course differently if there's a you need you, you have to have more uh, units so that's kind of the discussion uh, once you do the testing and you see that it is it is working we will get into into that you know what what needs and what what can we do in terms of pricing uh, also we have a question about what is the maximum number of subscribers <laughs> per device uh, if, if theoretically there's not such a limit we have we have customers that are uh, you have about one million two million one device uh, at the at the end for us customers it's just a matter of having more memory uh, the the processing is not it's not going to be kind of an issue of course depending on on the number of, of gigs that, that are passing through our device uh, but in terms of sessions in terms of subscribers we don't we don't have the uh, kind of a limit and just of course there's the limit on the on, on, you know the traffic that's going but that, that's not a, a, a bottleneck uh, so and we have also comment about uh, the several requirements that it's on our website of course we if you want to get more details you know email to us uh, or, or to of course to 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 uh, warwick or to to samuel uh, on these emails and uh i think there's no more questions or so unless uh warwick or uh byron you have anything I, else to add you know, we can close the, the webinar i think i think just to on the hardware requirements because it is a common uh, question what what server should i buy what cpu must it support um there's a very nice document on the beckwin site um, beckwin.com slash docs and in there there's the hardware requirements and the general requirements you'll see it's pretty much uh, an intel intel xeon nephilim or newer or an amd epic um, cpu um, does support dual CPUs and 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 as as Ingo said, um, memory is important. Uh, yeah. The more subscribers you get, we definitely want to adapt to the server that you know our customers have. They, they have an all server, all we mean from 2009 and uh, you know on. Uh, that's when they the Intel launched the Nehalem uh, uh, architecture. That's what the one that we start supporting. And, and you know certainly we will find uh, the right pro or help you finding uh, if, if you want to need to buy one but hopefully you have a spare uh, server from previous applications that you can use all right Lovely. Brilliant. I don't know if you have any anything else but if not uh, thank you uh, thank you Warwick thank you Baron thank you all, all the attendees we have this uh, on our um, uh, on, on YouTube on our channel, but we'll also contact you uh, so you can have the webinar. I don't know if you want to add something, Warwick. Or would... No, thank you. Thank you very much to all the attendees and to and to the panelists. I really appreciate your time. All right. Bye bye then. Thanks. Bye everybody. Bye bye.